The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you, their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not go astray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. St. Christ. Maximilian Colby said that the greatest poison afflicting modern-day men is indifference. Human beings being indifferent to the pain, the anguish, the suffering of their fellow men. And we experience this so often in our daily life. St. Maximilian Kolbe, the Polish Franciscan monk who gave his life for a fellow prisoner in the infamous concentration camp, the death camp set up by the Nazis in Poland during the Second World War. When the Nazis lined up the prisoners that were selected to be starved to death in punishment for the escape of other prisoners. One of the men who was selected to be starved to death was Franciszek Gajowniczek. And upon his selection by the guards, he started wailing in anguish. My wife, he cried, my children. And the pain of this man penetrated the heart of St. Maximilian Kolbe and he stepped forward and volunteered to die in place of Franciszek Gajowniczek. He took his place in the starvation cell, block number 18, which I have had the privilege of visiting eight times already, where St. Maximilian Kolbe did not die of starvation because the Nazis needed to make more room for more prisoners that they were going to starve. 
So they injected him with a poison. They poisoned St. Maximilian Kolbe with the poison of their indifference. The indifference of men is what killed St. Maximilian Kolbe. And the indifference of men today kills so many of us. We have been experiencing the great anguish and suffering of so many of our fellow men here in Lake County because of the fires. And so many people can say, well, it doesn't affect me. I'm far away. It's happening to them. We see so much suffering on television. We've become numb indifferent. It's the news of the day. Jesus is asking us to reflect, for to love God is to love our neighbor. You cannot separate the two. We may want to, but we can't. The Bible makes it very clear. It's easy for us to say, I love God. Come down in front of the altar and strike our breasts and say, oh, I love you, God. It's easy to do that because we do not see God. It's harder to love our fellow human beings because we see them. And the Bible says, those who say they love God but do not love their neighbor are liars. For loving God and loving neighbor goes hand in hand. We cannot love the God whom we do not see if we do not love the neighbor that we do see. It's very clear in the Bible that Jesus equates himself with us. When he appears to Paul, the apostle, whose name was Saul before his conversion, and on the road to Damascus, as Paul is blinded, Jesus says to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, who was he persecuting? He was persecuting the Christians. And Jesus doesn't say, why are you persecuting the Christians? He says, why are you persecuting me? Because whatsoever you do, to the least of these, Jesus says, you do unto me. And the righteous, that is the religious people, will then say, Oh Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you naked? When did we see you in prison? And Jesus says, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. That is Christianity. Today, in the beautiful Gospel reading, Jesus calls children forth and points to them and says, to such as these belongs the kingdom of heaven. Children during the time of Jesus had no rights. They were abused, they were used, they were nothing. And for Jesus, for that culture to call over a child and point to a child and say, to such as these belongs the kingdom of heaven, was revolutionary.
Jesus lifted up all of those who were insignificant and marginalized and asks us to do the same in our life, to be the people of God who have a heart full of love and compassion and empathy, trying to feel the pain of the other person, the heart that leaves the 99 and goes after the one lost sheep. That is the God that we have and serve. I remember not too long after I, I was ordained a priest in one of the parishes that I served. There was a day during the week where we had Eucharistic Adoration, Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, a blessed experience for those of us who love to spend time with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, contemplating the mystery of God's love for us and bathing ourselves in the presence of God in Eucharistic adoration. And so we would expose the Blessed Sacrament after morning Mass and have it exposed till the evening when we would have benediction, that is a blessing, with the Blessed Sacrament. And it happened once a week, and on that particular day, a funeral came in. We had to do a funeral. And we had to do it on that day because the family member, the brother of the deceased, who was in the military, could only come on that particular day. And so the family needed to have the funeral on the day when the entire church was closed for anything other than Eucharistic adoration because of the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. And so the regular crowd of adorers, those who would come every week, the regulars, the very religious people, I told them, on this particular week we will have to suspend the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament because we have to have a funeral. And so we have to interrupt Eucharistic adoration for a few hours. I thought the Third, third World War was started in the parish. I'm in the office, and I'm sitting in my office, and I can hear the regular people, the regular religious people, come into the office and badger the secretary, telling her, Father Adam does not have respect for the Blessed Sacrament. He's interrupting our time with Jesus. I couldn't take it anymore. So I opened the door. And I come out and I look at them. And I said, and of course, once they saw me, good morning, Father. <laughs> and I said, all of you say that you are people of faith, that you love God that you love to pray. Of course, Father. Of course. And I looked at them and I told them, Stop praying!
praying. Stop it. Stop praying. Because obviously what you're doing isn't working. Whatever you're doing is not working. So stop it. Stop. Because if your prayer life does not lead you to have compassion for a family that just lost a loved one, that is grieving, a grieving family, if your prayer life does not lead you to feel compassion, be moved with pity and understanding for this grieving family, then it is not prayer. Stop and start over. Indifference. It's about me. My time with God. My comfort. My life. What's good for me. Jesus was an other-centered person. He lived his life for other people. He gave his life for us, for others. And he spent his life giving to others. He was an other-centered person, not a me-centered person. If our prayer life, our Christian experience does not lead us to have an other-centered attitude, what we need to do is stop and start over.